It's beautiful fiber. Easy to use, but hard to master. I have something for you, fiber. Give me your hands. Now, the charge blade is simple. It has four basic parts. The shield, which charges the blade, the shells, the files, and of course, the blade. Alas, it's not that complicated. The shell simply holds the files in place. It is only when you discharge that this charge blade goes. So, um, I hope everyone enjoyed that intro. Welcome to CBR 100, Introduction to Charge Blade and Rise. As mentioned in the syllabus, we'll be going over the basics of thermodynamics before actually talking about the charge blade, since some of you didn't expect that to be a prerequisite. My hope for this lecture is to provide a clear visual learning experience for newcomers to the field of charge blade, and by the end of this lecture, you should have no problem operating your own charge blade in the field. So without further ado, I'm sure many of you are asking, why must we understand thermodynamics in order to understand how to operate a charge blade? Well, that's because modern charge blade theory is grounded in the movement and transfer of energy across the weapon's four components. The shell, the files, the shield, and the blade. By conducting certain actions, you transfer energy from one component to the next, all in one single direction. When hitting basic attacks, Frictions from these hits will build up as heat on the shells. You can turn this heat energy into files, from the files into power for your shield, from the shield into power for the blade, and voila, you've now transferred energy from the shells all the way down to the blade. It is imperative to understand this movement of energy, for if the previous component didn't have energy, the next component can't be energized even if you do the animations and the moves. So once again, Basic attacks charge the shells, shells charge the files, files charge the shield, and shields charge the blade. Charge blade. As some of you might know, energy comes in many different forms, but within the context of the charge blade, you only need to understand four. Mechanical energy, thermal energy, chemical energy, and electrical energy. Each component of the charge blade utilizes a different form of energy. You provide the initial mechanical energy by swinging the blade around. This mechanical energy is converted into thermal energy as the shell slowly heats up due to friction. Once enough thermal energy accumulates on the shells, you can convert this heat into files of chemical energy. You might have noticed that the standard issue charge blade only converts the yellow heat levels into three chemical files, requiring the red heat levels to actually fill all five files. This is due to the poor conversion efficiency of the basic charge blade. By installing the load shell catalyst, we can greatly improve the conversion rates, allowing yellow heat levels to be sufficient for filling all five files. Finally, you now have the option to convert these chemical files into electrical energy for your shield and blade. Or alternatively, to discharge these files as thermal energy in the form of explosions. The inner workings of these processes are beyond the scope of this course, but if you're interested, the inscriptions at the back of the charge blade might provide you with some hints. Oh, sorry, I meant the other one. While the shell and files direct energy into and out of the system, powering the shield and blade is what ultimately enables you during combat. This is the one component you want powered up at all times. A charged shield will provide you with the ultimate versions of your most powerful attacks, while also making your shield stronger with a free level in the guard skill. Each file provides a shield with 30 seconds of power, maxing out at 2.5 minutes of power with all 5 files. While you cannot charge it beyond this limit, you can provide it with more files during combat to increase the remaining duration. Powering the sword isn't as significant as maintaining power in the shield, and the duration is extremely short in comparison, lasting only 45 seconds. During this time, your sword will be coated in a black reagent, causing miniaturized explosions while being impossible to deflect.
Now that you understand the theory behind the thermodynamics of a charge blade, let's put it into practice. Step 1. Charge the shells by attacking. Holding A and release after the glow to do the double charge slash. If you follow this up with X or any other attacks, your shells will be charged the yellow level. Doing more attacks will bring you up to the red level. This is the most effective way to charge the shell, but there are more, which I will go over in future lectures. Step 2. Moving energy from shells into files. Pressing ZR plus A will move the energy from the shells into the files. Step 3. Turning files into shield energy. Pressing X plus A after any basic attack will result in a shield thrust. Pressing X plus A again during this thrust will prepare you to unleash a amped or ultra discharge. Once you've placed your weapon in this position, you will have three options. Pressing ZR during this animation will convert the files into energy for your shield. If your shield is not charged, this option should be your first priority. If you have a charged shield, not doing anything and letting the animation play out would unleash the ultra elemental discharge. On the other hand, if the shield is not charged, not doing anything will result in the amped elemental discharge instead. Lastly, if you wish to conduct the amped discharge while the shield is already powered, holding the left stick back would see the weapon do just that. We'll go over the difference between the two discharge types at the end of the lecture, along with why you might want one over the other. Step 4. Powering your sword using your shield. Pressing ZR plus A brings up a familiar animation, but this time we'll hold down X during this animation, releasing X only when the sword is tucked nicely and fully into the shield. This energizes the sword while also unleashing a powerful downswing. Once you are fully powered up, it would be a waste to put any more energy into the system. Therefore, any energy going into the system should be directed outwards. We do so in the form of files. Instead of having files powering us up, we turn files into explosions. As mentioned previously, there are two moves that turn files into explosions. The Amped Elemental Discharge and the Ultra Elemental Discharge. Judging by the names, you might think one is just better than the other, when in actuality, they each have their own pros and cons. And seeing as most of you are falling asleep as we near the end of the lecture, let me crack a joke or two. Comparing these two moves are like comparing the two types of girls you meet in college. One might be super hot, highly explosive, and great at blowing things up, but she takes forever to get ready, spends all your files, requires you to have a jacked up shield, and is often unreliable. While the other might be mild, average looking, not the best at blowing things up. But she doesn't take forever to get ready, hardly cost you anything, won't ask for you to have a jacked up shield, and is often very reliable. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide which one best suits the scenario. Just remember, don't bring a powder gal to meet your parents who have really strict timings, and don't bring a timid girl to a group where no one should be holding back. Now that we've gone over the basics of the weapon, and half of you are truly asleep, I'll conclude this part of the lecture. Next lecture, we'll be going over the advanced movesets and wire bug skills. Subscribe and get notified for when that lecture comes out, and every like and comment would have a great deal for such a small course. Until then, I hope you'll continue your studies in mastering the hunt.